your holy name. Just remain standing. Amen. I want to deliver you a word from the Lord. Next 20, 25 minutes won't hold you long today, but I have a word for you today. Thank you, musicians and singers. Didn't they do a marvelous job today? They're very, very thankful for ushering us into the presence of the Lord. Amen. I thank God for talent that we have in this church. I thank God for giftings and abilities, but most importantly, I'm thankful for the anointing of God because it's the anointing of God that makes the difference. Can you say amen? I've heard a lot of people sing that were gifted, talented, but yeah, you didn't feel much of anything. And I heard those that would miss the notes here and there, but man, the anointing of God would fall. And you knew they were anointed. I'd much rather have anointing than talent any day. Can you say amen? I'd much rather have anointing than a beautiful voice any day. But I'm thankful for God that we have both. Aren't you thankful? I think you ought to give the Lord another hand clap of praise for the church being blessed with wonderful talent. So very, very thankful. Thank you, Elder Almond, for your help today. Greatly appreciate you. I love you. Amen. I thank God for his ministry, anointed of the Lord. Amen. You ready for the word of the Lord one more time? Amen. Won't hold you long today, but I do have a word for you. Just one portion of Scripture, Psalm. Psalm chapter 34. Psalm chapter 34 and verse 8. Psalm 34 and verse 8. I want to say it's so good to see my friend Bill. We're glad you're here. I love you, man. You blessed me being here today. Would you give him and his family a warm welcome? We love him so very, very much. I love you. Bless my soul. Psalm 34 and verse 8. The word of the Lord simply says, Oh, taste and see. Give it a try. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. When you put your trust in him, you're going to be blessed. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. By the help of the Lord, for the next few moments, I want to preach to you on this simple thought. Oh, taste and see. Oh, taste and see. Would you lay your Bibles down today? Would you raise your hands one more time? And let's thank God for the anointing of the Lord that's going to rest in this house this very moment through the preaching of the Word of God. Lord Jesus, we come before you right now, God, and I ask you one more time to touch me. God, I ask you one more time to touch my weak and frail body and help me to move in the power of the Holy Ghost and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. And God, help us to do the perfect will of God right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For Lord, I know that you are all powerful and you are anointed. And I thank God for the hand of the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He shut to Reboko Sunday, Yeraboko Sete, Yedidabo Sundaya. I thank you for the anointing of God that's going to come forth from the preach word of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everyone shout Amen. Before you're seated, turn to your neighbor and tell him, Oh, taste and see. Amen. As you're being seated, put your hands together one more time and thank God for his word. Amen. Everyone shout the human body. Shout it again, the human body. The wonders of man is the human body. The structure and the makeup that consists of the body is truly incredible when you start doing some studying on the makeup of the body. The body's entire structure from head to foot is a miracle of precision engineering and production. No matter what portion of the human body is considered, one cannot but be impressed with what a marvelous mechanism each member is. The major organ alone, and there are ten of them, perform such unique feats of electric conduction that it would take a big book to explain each one of them adequately. And in the fraction of a second that it takes you to read one word on a piece of paper, the marrow in your bones produce over one 100,000 red blood cells in one second. Everyone shout the brain. An issue of Sunshine Magazine compares the human brain, the human mind to a computer. It stated that scientists were asked to determine the size 
and the cooling system and the power required to perform electronically the same functions that are automatically accomplished by a man's brain during his lifetime. They decided that if all parts were transistorized and built on a miniature scale like those used in rockets to the moon, the following would be needed. A machine the size of the United Nations building in New York City. A cooling system with an output equal to Niagara Falls. And a power source that would produce as much as electricity as used in homes and industry in the entire state of California. Our brain is so powerful. Our brain is incredible. It is outstanding. It is even hard at times to comprehend the functioning of the brain and the power that it has. Even though your brain, your mind will forget more than 90% of what you learn during your lifetime, it may still store up, store up as much as 10 times more information that is in the, in the Library of Congress with its 17 million volumes. It's powerful. The body is incredible. Your working day, if you're an adult of average weight, here is what you accomplish in 24 hours. Your heart beats 103,689 times. Your blood travels 168 million miles in 24 hours. You breathe 23,040 times. You inhale 438 cubic feet of air. You eat, now this is on an average, I'll leave it at that. You eat, on an average, three and a half pounds of food. Now, that seems very little to some. You drink 2.9 quarts of liquid. You speak 4,800 words, including unnecessary ones. And you move 750 muscles. And your nails grow, your fingernails grow 0. 0.000046 inch in a 24 hour period. Your hair grows 0. 0.01714 inch in a 24 hour period. And you exercise, listen to this, in a 24 hour period, you exercise 7 million brain cells. It's a lot. The question is today, after all of that, do you feel tired right now? Amen. The human body is magnificent, incredible, overwhelming. We can talk about all of these magnificent aspects of the human body, but there are some things that we must include, and that is our five senses. Everyone shout five senses. We have this sense of touch. Everyone shout touch. By which the presence and form of external objects or forces are perceived. And in man, touch is accomplished by nerve endings in the skin, and these convey sensations to the brain via nerve fibers. Just by the touch, you can tell the texture of something, whether it's velvet, whether it's plastic, whether it's paper, whether it's rough or smooth, hot or cold, by just simply the touch. Then you also find a second sense called sight. Everyone shout sight by which colors and objects are perceived. No scientific instrument is as sensitive to the light as a person's eye. And in the dark, its sensitivity increases, listen to this, a hundred thousand times. One can detect a faint glow less than a thousandth as bright as a candle's flame. He can see light from the stars, and the nearest of all stars is 25, they say, 25 billion miles away. Automatically, the muscles of the eye relax so that the lens is small and thick for distant viewing, or they stretch the lens to bring into focus. No wonder the eye was the original model for cameras. The eye is something powerful. The eye is something incredible. It's hard to imagine all the intricate detail of the eye, but our eyes help us to understand what is before us and our surroundings round about us. And then you have smell. Everyone shout smell. Now, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. The nose, which some have smaller or larger. The nose is equipped with a factory nerve that is a special organ smell, the sense of smell by which odors 
are perceived good or bad. You walk into a kitchen and your wife is cooking a meal, guess what, mmm, honey, whoo, that smells good. It could be meatloaf, mashed potatoes and gravy and green beans, my, my, my blueberry cobbler, whoo. And I'm feeling something right now. Smells good. Smells so good, your taste buds stand up and salute before you even take a bite. Good. But then you walk into the laundry room. Bad day. Bad day. And so you see that that the sense of smell is a powerful thing. Matter of fact, I recall one day I, 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 I was pulling up into the parking lot here at the church. And, and for whatever reason, I smelt garlic really bad. I smelt garlic outside in the parking lot. Now, now, mind you, I love garlic. But, man, you ever been around somebody that ate so much garlic that they just walk in the building and you smelt them? I, I played basketball with some guys that when they're running down the court, you're thinking, man, they smell like garlic. And I didn't want to drive the lane because I knew if I, if I rubbed up against them, man, they're sweating on me and I smell like garlic too. I'm telling you, just a sense of smell helps you indicate, do I want to go there or not go there? Do I want to eat that or not eat that? Do, do I want to be in that environment or not be in that environment? Do I want to be around that person or not be? The sense of smell is a powerful thing. But then you have the sense of hearing. Everyone shout hearing. By which sound waves are perceived. The ear is as much as an acoustic marvel as the eye is an optic one. The inner ear is like a keyboard with 15,000 keys. Because that is the number of different tones that can be detected within your ear. Not only that, but the ear also performs the functioning of hearing. It acts to control equilibrium as well. Who but God could have orchestrated such a dual purpose instrument such as the ear? But then you have this sense of taste. And I love that sense. There's nothing like the sense of taste. Taste is determined by receptors called taste buds, which can determine what's sweet or what's sour, what's salty or what's bitter. The definition of taste is this, to have experience or enjoyment of something, special fondness and aptitude for a pursuit. The taste buds are wonderful. The taste buds are awesome. I haven't been feeling well for the last six, seven, eight weeks. And, and, and just over the last few days, I've been feeling really good, 100%. And I thank God for it. God is good all the time. But yesterday, I cheated just a little bit with Brother Matt Lovejoy and Brother T Tony Smith and Brother Chester. And I wanted some chili really, really bad with some, with some cheese in it and some sour cream and some scallions, boy, that was slamming. I looked at Brother Matt and I said, I'm testing myself out right now. And I took one bite. Man, it was like a filet mignon. It was so good. It, it, it I don't know, it took me to a place I'd never been before. That's how good it was. There, there, there's, just, there's just something about taste. And, and, and I tried to explain. Brother Matt said, how is it? How are you doing? What does it taste like? I'm saying, Brother Matt, I, I don't think I can explain it to you, man. I, ha I haven't had this for about six, seven, eight weeks. And, and, and I know it's just chilly. And it, and it looks just like meat and beans and sour cream and cheese. But I'm telling you, bud, man, this is almost heaven. I can't, I can't even explain it to you, man. It's good. He says, okay, I, I understand. All right, I, that's fine. You enjoy it. God bless you, man. Have a good time. And so there's just something about taste. The taste is a powerful thing. It's, it's one thing to see it, Brother Brian. Would you help me? Now, I need some help, and I knew Brother Brian would help me with this because my boy loves to eat. I have before me today. Thanks, Spring Hill Pastry. We have us a cream dog. Whew. Chocolate icing, drizzled on top, powdered sugar, Whew. cream going down. Mm, man. Whew. Then we have us a glazed, we have us a glazed donut, Bavarian cream with chocolate on top, 
And then, 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 then we have a, a, a glazed donut with, with cherry topping and cherry feeling. Now, now, you see, I can describe this to you, and you can see it, but it's one thing to see it. But there's something about tasting that which you see. It's, it's one thing to smell. Man, I can smell it from here. Can you smell it, Brother Jim? Can you smell it, Brother William? Man, I can smell it from here. I can just smell the sugar, and I, I, I can just smell the chocolate. And There's drool dribbling down his chin right now. I can just smell the cherries and the sugar and the powder and the cream. There's just something about smelling it. But when you taste it, that which, you, that which is smelling is so good, then and only then will you truly enjoy and know what it's all about. It's one thing to touch it and, and, and feel the moistness of it and, 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 and mm, just lick your fingers. There's just something about it and you're thinking, man, that's and I got to get a hold of them jewels because if I get a hold of them jewels, I'm going to tear them jewels up because them, man, there's just something about it. There's something about touching about it. But touching just doesn't do much for me because touching doesn't satisfy the hunger that I have on the inside of me. It's, it's when you partake of it. It's when you taste it that will bring about the effect that you desire. And so, Brother Brian, you can look at that all day long. But it won't do much for you unless you taste it and, and, and partake of it, then you'll be able to understand and receive the substance that it has for you. You, you, you can touch it all day long, but, but touching it will not satisfy your hunger. And, and you can be in its presence and you can look at it, you can dwell on it, you can think about it, you can desire it, you can long for it. But unless you go from that point and crossing over to another dimension and say, all my wants and all my desires and all my longings and being in its presence, I've got to get from that point and then go into a dimension where I just reach down and partake of that. Then I will fully understand and know what it's all about that I am desiring. And so, Brother Brian, if you would, I want you to pick up that corn dog, if you would. Not the corn dog, but the cream dog. I'm looking at it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. The, the, I'm telling you. I haven't had desserts like this for a long time, and they're about to disturb me right now. My mind's all disturbed. Pick up that cream dog right now. Grab that microphone, Brother Brian. And I want you just to eat that slowly. Take a good bite of it. Is that your favorite, Sister Tanya? Take, take a good bite of that. Mmm, explain, explain, mmm. Now, 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 explain to me what, 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 you, what you taste, and, and explain to me what's happening right now in your mouth, and, well, the first thing is the cream. You get the cream first. Mm -hmm, okay, okay. I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to understand. It, it is a, a light cream. It's a custard-based cream. You get into the chocolate that enrobes the cream. Mm, you sound like Anthony Bourdain. You like that enrobes the cream? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. The pastry itself is, is very dense. Now, 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 can you all taste that? Can, can, you, can you understand what he's fully talking about? Now, I hear what he's saying. There's a little bit of powdered sugar on top of it. I see it. I can. Here, take a look at it. No, I can even smell it. But there's just something, there's just something I don't quite understand unless I taste that for myself. Whew. Better not. Grab me the very donut, man. Explain to me what just try to understand. Try to understand. See if you can taste it. See if you understand and get a hold of the sugar and the chocolate and the berry and cream. Ooh. Just walk down that aisle, Brother Brian, and just show them. Just show them what's going on right there. Brother Jim, be careful now with your cane now. Come on, explain to him. Just try to explain. I, I'm just trying to understand. It is, uh, the first thing you get is the glaze around it. And the glaze is starting to flake off my lips, but the glaze is, is that. And then you get into the, the dense donut, and, the, and again, the custard. The custard is just light, creamy, just very good. And you get a little touch of that chocolate. Oh, yeah. Mm. You taste the sugar? Do you taste the chocolate? Oh, yeah. Do you taste the custard? Oh, yeah. He, he, he's trying to explain that to you, but there's just something about unless... You taste it for yourself. You don't truly understand what I am talking about. 
Brother Brian, if you can, lay that down. <laughs> grab, grab that other donut there, if you would. Try to explain to me what's going on there. Anybody like cherries? Yeah. Cherry topping on top of that, man. I'm going to go over here and there. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, real quick. Mm. It's a little different, Pastor. You get more donut first. Yeah. You get a little bit of the, the glaze. You get just a touch of the of the cherry. Yeah, but Brother Isaiah, he loves donuts. Show, show, show. Here, Isaiah. What do you think, bud? Mmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Man, See, as, as, hard, as hard as you're trying right now, mm. you are trying to taste that which he is describing. Mm. You, you can't taste something that someone else has partaken of. And you can sit there all day long and watch them eat it, but unless you eat it for yourself, you'll never be able to taste it and be satisfied. You can look at it. You can smell it. You can touch it all you want to. But unless you taste it, you'll not truly understand what we are talking about. You just don't understand unless you taste it for yourself. You just don't understand unless you taste the chocolate and the cream and the Bavarian cream for yourself. There's no way to understand it. There's no way to explain it. There's no way to bring it across to you unless you try it for yourself. And the question is today, why are we as the people of God finding ourselves in the house of God today? Because we understand and we've heard about this one named Jesus. And we understand and heard about this thing called the Holy Ghost and the power of God. But it's not enough for me just to hear about it. I want to get in his presence and taste it and see what it's all about. Hallelujah. At the University of Chicago Divinity School, each year they have what is called Faith Day. It is a day when all the Christians of like faith in the area are invited to the school because they want the money to keep coming in. On this day, each one is to bring a lunch to be eaten outdoors in a grassy picnic area. Every faith day, the school would invite one of the greatest minds to lecture in the Theological Education Center. So one year, they invited Dr. Paul Tillich. Dr. Tillich spoke for two and one half hours proving that the resurrection of Jesus was false. He quoted scholar after scholar after scholar, and he he quoted book after book, and he concluded that since uh, there was no such thing as a historical resurrection, the religious tradition of the church uh, was groundless, emotional mumbo-jumbo because it was based on a relationship with a risen Jesus who, in fact, never rose from the dead uh, in any literal sense. Uh, he then asked if there were any questions. Mistake. After about 30 seconds, an old, dark-skinned preacher with a head of short, cropped, woolly white hair, stood up in the back of the auditorium. He said, Doctor, I got a question for you. As all eyes turned toward him, he reached into his sack lunch and pulled out an apple and began to eat it. Dr. Tillich, my question is a simple question. Now, I ain't never read them books you read. And I can't recite the scriptures in the original Greek. And I know nothing about all these theologians and all these scholars. And he finished with the apple. And he then said, all I want to know is this. This apple I just ate, was it bitter or sweet? Dr. Tillich paused for a moment and answered in exemplary scholarly fashion. I cannot possibly answer that question, sir. For having tasted your apple, I have no idea whether it's bitter or sweet. The white-haired preacher dropped the core of his apple in his crumpled paper bag, looked at Dr. Tillich and said calmly, neither have you tasted my Jesus. Taste close. <laughs> the over 1,000 people in attendance did what some of you did right now. They stood to their feet and applauded and said, yes, sir, you don't understand unless you taste my Jesus. I've come to tell somebody right now, they may say that Jesus is dead. They may say that Jesus is fiction. But I've come to tell you, if you ever get into an apostolic church and you raise your hands and let God touch you, you'll understand that Jesus is alive and well. Can you taste him? Can you taste him? Can you taste him? He's here right now. He's here right now. He's here right now.
Psalm 34 and verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. I've come to remind us this morning that you can quote scholar after scholar, but you don't truly know him until you tasted him. You can quote book after book, but you don't truly know him until you've tasted him. You can memorize verse after verse out of the word of God, but you don't truly know him until you've tasted him. You can have degrees, you can attain seminars, and you can sit on a pew and you can attend a service, but you don't truly know him until you've tasted him. I declare to you today, I don't want to just come to church. I want to taste him every time I'm here. I don't want to just sit on a pew. I want to taste him every time I'm here. I don't want to just go through the motions. I want to taste him every time I'm here. I don't want to just be able to quote Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I don't want to just quote Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 that says, Neither is there salvation any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. I don't want to just quote, My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. I don't want to just quote those things. I want to be able to taste those things and say, God, you're alive and God, you're real. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is a good. I remind the apostle said, I don't want to know just about him, but I want to know him. The text says, oh, taste and see. What does that mean, pastor? I'll tell you what it means. Once you taste him, you'll see there's nothing like him. Once you, once you taste him, you'll see that there's nothing more powerful. And once you taste him, you'll see that there's nothing more satisfying. And once you taste him, you'll see that there's nothing more desirable. When I taste him, I won't need drugs. When I taste him, I won't need alcohol. When I taste him, I won't need those addictions that has latched on to me. When I taste him, I, I won't need the pleasures of this world. When I taste him, I won't need that which I have felt. Have I've always needed. I've come to tell you when you walk down that aisle in an apostolic church and you throw your hands in the air and something comes on you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet, there is something that gets a hold of you that you've never experienced in all of your life. And you begin to taste this God I'm talking about. You begin to taste this Jesus that I'm talking about. It is a satisfying thirst and it is a satisfying taste. And you'll think, I don't need anything else in my life because Jesus is anything and everything that I need. He's anything and everything that I need. I've come to tell you all it takes is just one taste. Just one taste is all it's going to take. Just one taste is all it's going to take. I've come to tell you today, hurrying along, you don't know like I know. I'm going to say that again. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. I can try to explain to you what it feels like when the anointing hits you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. I can try to explain to you what it feels like when the supernatural power of God rests on you. I can try to explain what it feels like when healing transpires in your body. It feels like hot oil flowing in your veins. I can try to explain to you what it feels like that day you're delivered from addictions. I can try to explain to you what it feels like when something gets a hold of me and I feel goosebumps from the top of my head to the sole of my feet and my foot starts moving and my hand starts moving and my hands start clapping. I feel the glory and the power of God and then all of a sudden the power of God falls on me. I can try to explain to you what it's like that when you're saying hallelujah, I love you Jesus and then all of a sudden you start speaking in other tongues as a, I can try to explain it to you but there's just something about trying it for yourself. There's just something about experiencing it for yourself. There's just something about learning that for yourself. Self. However, the only way you're going to understand it is if you taste it for yourself. If you feel him for yourself, if you experience for yourself. You know, you can't taste what someone else is partaking of. And you can't feel what someone else is feeling. And you can't experience what someone else is experiencing. You just got to taste it for yourself. I'll go as far as saying this today. If we hurry to a close, you won't make it because of your mama's experience. You're not going to make it because your daddy is living for God. You're not going to make it because of your granddaddy's faith. And you're not going to make it because of your pastor's faith. I love you. 
I'm here to help you. But you know what? I can only do so much. You got to have a relationship with God. You got to have an experience with God. You got to taste Him for yourself. You won't make it just simply because you're in the church of the living God and just simply because of your good deeds and works and faith. You alone, only by yourself, must get to a place in your life and in your walk with God where you want to taste him for yourself and you want to experience him for yourself. I am fifth generation Pentecost. Fifth generation Pentecost. I have been around this all my life and I have sat at the feet of some of the greatest men that are in the kingdom of God and I have heard miraculous stories and testimonies concerning the kingdom of God and I have heard incredible singing and preaching and I have been schooled and trained in the ways of God. However, there was a point in my life where I had to understand that wasn't going to keep me and that wasn't going to sustain me and that wasn't going to uphold me in the time of trouble and that wasn't going to be my strength in the day of adversity. The only thing that was going to keep me, the only thing that was going to sustain me, the only thing that was going to help me in the day of trouble and adversity was when I had a taste of him and a revelation of who he really is and what he was and had a relationship of God for myself. You listen to pastor today, if you get a taste of what I'm talking about, if you get a taste of what I've experienced, if you get a taste of what I'm feeling and what I've encountered, excuse my English, but one taste ain't going to do you. I said one taste isn't going to do you. Once you get a taste of the Holy Ghost, you're going to want more. Once you get a taste of the anointing, give me that microphone, you're going to want more. Once you get a taste of the joy that we experience, you're going to want more. Once you get a taste of that fire that's shut up in your bones, you're going to want more. Once you get a taste of the power of God in your life, you're going to want more. Once you get a taste of the unbelievable and the undeniable and the supernatural touch of God, You're going to want more. I love potato chips. Lay's potato chips. I tried, Brother Frank, one time to eat just one. But I failed. I stopped off at a convenience store on my way to the hospital. You know anybody like salt and vinegar potato chips? Well, I love salt and vinegar potato chips. My favorite, salt and vinegar potato chips, man, they're just the best. Grabbed a bag, and I thought, okay, Lord, I'm dieting. I'm watching my weight, so I just need just one. (laughs) And so what I did, Sister Barry, is I I looked in that little small bag. Well, I say it was a small bag. It was about that big. (laughs) And I didn't take the first chip off the top. I thought, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. And so I pulled the car over, and literally... I had a newspaper in my car. I spread out that newspaper on the seat beside me. Took those bag of chips and dumped it. Why? Because I wanted to find the biggest chip. I thought if I'm eating just one, I'm going to make me a big one. If I'm going to sin, I'm going to do it right. I thought, okay, I'm finding me the biggest chip. So Brother Roger, after about a minute... I found a chip about that big, and I began just to nibble on that like a little rabbit. (laughs) That thing lasted for about 30 seconds. (laughs) And all of a sudden, I said, all right, we're good. I was driving down the road, Brother Isaiah, and all of a sudden, there was an urge that came on me and said, one, isn't going to do it. I got to have me some more. And so I reached over and Grabbed the second largest chip. Began to eat that one. And I thought, that didn't do it either. The more I ate, the more I wanted. The more I tasted, the more I wanted. The more I consumed, Brother William, the more I wanted. I've come to tell you when it comes to the things of God and the ways of God, the more you're in the presence of God, honey, the more you're going to want it. 
the more the Holy Ghost falls on you, the more you're going to want it. The more the power of God rests on you, the more you're going to want it. I've come to tell you when you taste him, just one taste isn't going to do it. You're going to want more and more and more. Why is this house full today? I'll tell you why. Because they understand just one taste isn't going to do it. I want more of God. I want more of his power. I want more of his anointing. I want fire shut up in my bones. One taste isn't going to do it. Musicians come. I've come to tell you, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I've come to tell everybody today I've tasted it and it's good. In case you're wondering, I've tasted God and it's powerful. In case you're wondering, I've tasted God and he delivers. Oh, in case you're wondering, I've tasted God and he heals my body. I've tasted God and never, 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 never be the same again. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Just try it. And you'll know what I'm talking about. Just try it and I know that you will like it. Let me say this today as every single person stands to your feet. You've tried your way far too long. Let me say this today that you've did it the way of the world for too long. You've tried other ways far too long. What you've been doing hadn't worked. So why don't you just give the Lord a try? Why don't you try it his way for a while? Why don't you just take a taste and try it and you just may like it. Matter of fact, I'll say you will like it. You may ask the question today, why would I want to taste it and feel an experience? Because it's something you haven't felt before. You can't duplicate it. You can't manufacture it. You can't copy it. You just know that it comes from the throne of God. And you just know that it comes from the very portals of heaven. And you just know that it was ordained of God. I'm not talking about a one-time experience. You know, some people think that you can have a one-time experience, that's all you need. Well, I received the touch of God. I have repented in my life. I've accepted the Lord. I confess the Lord as Savior. I've received the Holy Ghost. Went down in water in the name of the Lord 35 years ago. No. Continue to taste Him. Continue to experience him. I'm not talking about a fly-by-night God. I'm talking about a God that's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'm talking about a God that will touch us each and every day and give us a renewing and a refreshing each and every day and that God will satisfy those longings in your life He's a God that is more than enough. I'm talking about a continual flowing. I'm talking about a continual transformation. And there are some of us in this place this morning that needs a change in our life. And there's some of us in this place this morning that needs a fresh start. And there's some of us in this place this morning that needs a transformation to happen in our life. And this will only occur... You commit yourself by saying, I'm not going to be like I was yesterday. And I'm not going to walk the same path that I've been walking. I'm not going to be satisfied with my walk with God. I'm not going to talk the same way that I've been talking. I'm not going to be living the same way that I've been living. I've got to do something about it. I'm going to take a step of faith and trust Him. I'm going to turn from the direction that I'm going. And I'm not going to depend upon pastor, the church, and those around me. I'm going to taste it for myself. I'm going to experience it for myself. I'm going to have an encounter with God for myself. Lost your direction. Your heart is calloused. You lost your focus. You're no longer desiring the things of God and you fall into a state of complacency. You need to taste it again. Have you forgotten what it tastes like? You need to taste it. 
you've lost your joy, taste it again. If you lost your excitement for the things of God, taste it again. If you lost your desire to do the will of God in your life, just taste it again. If you lost your desire to be obedient to the word of God, just taste it again. If you're longing for some things in your life that this world cannot give you, you've searched high and low, and you realize that this world is not your answer. You're in the right place. For if you taste it, you will satisfy your soul. I want every person, if you would, in the house of the Lord, to close your eyes this very moment. I'm preaching to more than just one in this house. I'm preaching to more than just two in this house. I'm preaching to more than just a few in this house. I'm preaching to many today under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. There's some of you that you've never given God a try. Taste it. Taste and see. The Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. There's some, it's been a long time since you've talked in tongues. It's been a long time since you've felt the joy of the Lord. It's been a long time since you had a spring in your step. Just taste and see that the Lord is good. Just taste and see. I want you just to reach over with every head bowed, every eye closed, and take the hand of the neighbor you're standing beside right now. And this whole sanctuary is going to become an altar before Almighty God. I'm not satisfied with where I'm at. I'm 41 years old, and I've been in the church all my life. And it could be so easy to become complacent and satisfied. But God, I declare to you today, I'm not satisfied. God, I thank you for the anointing that I feel, but God, I'm not satisfied. God, I thank you for your power and presence that's in this house, but God, I'm not satisfied. God, I thank you for the number that's in this building, but God, we're not satisfied. God, I thank you for the demonstration of the Holy Ghost in our midst, but God, we're not satisfied. God, I thank you for apostolic ministry and apostolic power and apostolic anointing, and God, I'm not satisfied. I've tasted it. I've tasted it and I've experienced it. God, I know you have more. The Holy Ghost is here right now. Will you take that hand and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now as they begin to sing and let God touch you right now. Come on, he's here. Taste him. Taste him right now. The power of God is settling on you right now. God is speaking to hearts and minds and spirits right now. Taste him. Come on, I can try to explain it to you. I can preach to you all I want about the goodness of God and the power of the Holy Ghost and the anointing of God. But unless you taste it for yourself, that's the only way you're going to fully understand. Come on, healing desires to fall on some of you right now. The touch of God desires to fall on some of you right now. Oh, taste and see that He is good. That's it. Pray in the Holy Ghost for your neighbor right now. God is bringing about a change in some lives right now. Come on, some of you remember what it's like to taste Him. Come on, that joy is coming back to some of you. That strength is coming to some of you. That renewing is coming to some of you right now. You're getting back. What the enemy has stolen from you. The things of this world. Pain and sorrow and grief. Has caused you. Has removed you from the presence of God. To the point where you can't taste him like you used to taste him. It's here right now. It's here right now. Taste him. It's here right now. Let that spirit of God come on you. Let that power of God come on you right now. 
God, I pray renewing to come on your people. I pray refreshing to come on your people right now in the name of Jesus. I pray now in the name of the Lord. A renewing of joy, a renewing of strength. A renewing of the touch of the Holy Ghost right now from the top of the head to the sole of their feet. God, every individual that's in this house right now that we are praying for, God, they may not understand who you really are. And God, they may not have the experience they need to have. But God, I pray they feel a touch of you right now. God, I pray they taste who and what you are right now. And God, there'll be a hunger and a desire on the inside of them that'll never be quenched. That'll never be satisfied. I thank you for it now. I loose it upon them in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, we ask for more today. Oh, more of your power. More of your power. today if you're here and it's your desire God in the year of 2015 starting today the first Sunday of March God before this year is up take me to a place I've never been before take me to a dimension that I've never been before Help me to see you in a way I've never seen you before. Help me to experience you in a way I've never experienced you before. Touch me in a way that I've never been touched before. And move on me in a way that I've never been moved on before. If that's your heart's desire, raise your hand right now. And I want you to say those words today with every ounce of strength you have in the spirit of Almighty God and say, God, take me there this year. God, take me there this year. Take me there this year. He'll do that for you right now. This is your day to a path. Walking down a path you've never been on before because your desire has set your course. Your desire has set your focus. I get a sense today there's some people of God, there's some men and women of God that's desiring a greater anointing and desiring a greater touch and desiring a greater, a greater presence of God in their life and desiring a greater unction in their life and desiring a greater walk with God in their life. That's desiring things that they felt before and desiring things that God spoke into their spirit. But now they desire to taste it. And you've got to taste heaven and you long for more. God, may it rest on your people now. God, take them to the place you desire them to be now in the name of Jesus. God, we go there together right now in the name of the Lord. God, we go there together right now in the name of the Lord. God, we give ourselves over to it right now in the name of the Lord. God, we give ourselves over to it right now in the name of the Lord. I taste and see that the Lord is good. I taste and see that the Lord is good. God make provisions coming to the lives of your people. God make provisions coming to the lives of your people. God may an anointing come into the lives of your people. God lay a touch of the Holy Ghost coming to the lives of your people. We thank you for it, God. We desire more. Would you sing it in closing as a prayer to the Lord? In closing, sing it as a prayer to God. I believe you do.
Put your hands together and say, God, I desire that today with everything in me, I desire that today, God, with everything in me, turn to your neighbor and tell him, I desire more. Tell him, I desire more.